The silverfish is a very simple and very common little creature that accompanies us practically at every step. Let's get to know it a little better. That's right, my friends. Today's episode will be about silverfish, those strange silvery white insects that we most often find in our bathrooms. We'll answer questions like what silverfish actually are, where they live, why they're so common, and whether they pose any threat to humans. And in general, I'll share a few interesting facts about the lives of these strange creatures, whether you like them or not. Let's start with where I actually got these silverfish from. Here you can see a container with three of them. And honestly, I waited quite a long time to film this, and the reason is very simple, not to say trivial. I don't have any silverfish in my bathroom. Uh, I searched extensively, but unfortunately came up empty-handed. That's when my neighbors and viewers stepped in to help. See for yourself. Alright, my friends, there's a funny story, because yesterday in my group I asked if anyone had any silverfish, in quotes, to borrow. And one of the viewers, Przemysław, big shout out to him, wrote to me saying he left them under some wall near Leclerc. So now I'm going to look for the hidden treasure in the form of silver bugs. That was very kind of him. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll take the silverfish too. And off we go. Hey there. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, what are you eating? What's up? That was funny too. All the signs in the sky and on the earth tell me it's going to be under that wall. We'll see. So these should generally be... There they are. Oh, damn. Man. They're actually here and they're alive. Awesome. But they really are. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy them all, so it's kind of an Indiana Jones adventure. Then one of my neighbors, whom I also greet warmly, brought me these three pieces. So that's how I got silverfish at home, and now I can finally make a video about them. The story of silverfish, let's maybe start by saying what silverfish actually are. Because I'm not revealing anything new if I say that they're insects. Moreover, they're simple wingless insects that can't fly. And that's actually interesting because the vast majority of insects we know in the world have wings, but silverfish lack wings and simply can't fly. Maybe that's actually a good thing. And why am I even mentioning something so obvious that they're insects? Well, that's because I've heard all sorts of stories, like about those very common creatures in Poland, for example, woodlice, which you probably know too, because they're those small, grey, many-legged creatures that you'll find if you turn over any random stone or paving slab, there will be woodlice there. Woodlice are actually terrestrial crustaceans, not insects, so it's important to clarify what a specific creature is. And silverfish are insects. And now, the main character of our episode is one of probably four or five species of silverfish found in Poland. Because it's not like there's only one silverfish and we only have the sugar silverfish and that's it. No, that's not the case. All over the world, because it's a cosmopolitan taxon, which means that silverfish are found everywhere and there are roughly 500 to 550 species of them. And when I say all over the world, I really mean all over the world, on every continent, including Antarctica. So these are insects that are incredibly adaptable. Today's episode focuses on Lepis saccharina, commonly known as the silverfish, which is the most well-known and frequently encountered silverfish species in Poland. And now I'm almost 100% sure that most, if not all of you who are watching this video on your phone, tablet, laptop, or television have either heard of or have dealt with something called a silverfish. And basically all they know is that something like this exists, that it often scurries around in the bathroom, nobody really knows exactly what it's doing there, but it exists and that's where their knowledge ends. That's why I'm making this video, to introduce these insects to you more closely. And get this, silverfish, even though they're insects that don't really catch our eye, they're not colorful, they're not huge, they're actually kind of a bit disgusting, they're still so popular that there are even memes about them. One of my favorite memes is, of course, the one that says nobody really knows what silverfish do at night, just like nobody knows where the hedgehog toddles off to at night. Fun fact about silverfish number one. Actually, I've already told you they can't fly. As one of the few insect orders, they don't have wings. Ergo, they can't fly. Fun fact number two. Silverfish don't copulate, that is. I'll have to bleep this out. They don't have sex. Seriously. These insects do not engage in copulation. Besides the fact that in extreme cases they can reproduce through parthenogenesis, meaning they don't need a partner to reproduce, generally what happens is the male leaves his sperm on the ground or another surface, then uses threads to guide the female, and she takes up the sperm. I know it sounds a bit disgusting, but that's exactly how it works with these insects, and that's how silverfish reproduce. Before we move on to fun fact number three, let's talk a bit about the lifestyle and habits of silverfish. 
Insects possess incredible adaptations that have allowed them to thrive on nearly every continent and survive in most conditions except for extremely harsh environments like minus 70 degrees Celsius temperatures or volcano craters. First of all, silverfish are capable of fasting for a very long time. That means as long as they have access to water, they can go without eating for a year, for example. It's very similar to tarantulas, which are those spiders I have here. This is a very useful skill in case there's a shortage of food. Skill number two is the ability to digest cellulose. And that's pretty amazing. For example, the human body can't digest cellulose. If we eat a piece of paper, that piece of paper will just come out. But it's the other way around. That's not how it works with silverfish. They can eat a book. They can eat wallpaper. They can eat organic glues. As the name silverfish suggests, silverfish mainly feed on polysaccharides, which are complex sugars. So they'll eat sugar, they'll eat cookies, they'll eat wallpaper, they'll eat organic glues, they'll eat our books, some posters, they'll eat practically anything that's edible, which is also pretty obvious. They'll eat human skin flakes, and that's usually what they feed on in bathrooms, and that's why we most often find them in bathrooms, because that's where people leave their skin flakes. They'll consume paint, hair, clothes, carpets, virtually anything. And among other reasons, because they can eat so many things and therefore potentially destroy so many things, they are considered pests. And just to avoid any misunderstandings here, because I've heard a lot of stories like, oh, I have silverfish, they feed on dead skin, they're harmless, it's fine. Claiming silverfish are useful is nonsense. At best, they can be considered harmless. If we have silverfish in the bathroom, I don't know, three, five, seven of them, that's fine. They'll eat some dead skin, they'll clean the bathroom a bit. But let's be honest, those silverfish aren't going to eat some huge amount of that mess, to put it bluntly, that we all have in our bathrooms, whether we like it or not. So at best, those silverfish will just be harmless to us. It gets a bit worse if, for example, they run out of food in the bathroom, or if there are too many silverfish, and then they'll just be considered pests, because they'll start going after our food supplies and all the things I just mentioned. So having a few silverfish in the bathroom is okay, it won't hurt, it's not a problem, but if the population starts to grow, then it could escalate into some kind of problem. Silverfish can be found in various rooms within homes, not just limited to specific areas. Very often silverfish can be found, for example, in grocery stores or in pastry shops or in bakeries. Generally, anywhere it's warm, dark and humid, because silverfish don't really like light, so shaded damp places with potentially a lot of food are ideal places for them to live. Silverfish can also be found in breweries, and some coexist with termites and leaf litter, under bark and under stones. Silverfish can be found practically everywhere. Fun fact number four. For such small insects, which reach, let's say in Poland, a maximum length of two centimeters, a lifespan that can reach up to eight years is relatively impressive. And that's true, uh, silverfish are relatively long-lived insects, and they actually grow for a very long time. When a silverfish is born and it's small, it will then go through one, two, three, four, or even more molts. And it will work a bit like with female spiders, because after reaching sexual maturity, the silverfish will keep molting until the end of its life. And if it lives for eight years, then it will molt quite a few times. Now let's think about why the silverfish is called a silverfish. This insect resembles a fish in nearly every way. There are two theories that explain this similarity. First of all, it's its appearance. If we look at such a silverfish under high magnification, we'll notice that it's an insect with a broad body at the front, which tapers toward the back, and at the end it has these three protruding spikes. The two side spikes on silverfish are sensory abdominal appendages, while the small end spike is not a stinger or ovipositor. Silverfish don't bite, sting, pierce, or poison. Terminal filaments are related to reproduction, and it's a complex topic. So overall, the body shape is a bit like a silverfish, and if you look closely, silverfish are covered with these silvery or differently colored tiny scales. What else would you call a silver scaly insect shape like a fish? Of course, a silverfish. And the second theory is that silverfish behave a bit like fish. They don't fly, so they run and walk, but their movement, their running is very quick, very distinctive, kind of fluttering, and in fact, their behavior does resemble that of a fish. So they were called silverfish. Besides, when it comes to their structure, silverfish are typical insects. They have a body divided into three main parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The abdomen is divided into segments. Silverfish have three pairs of walking legs, antennae, abdominal appendages, and a terminal filament. So now you practically know everything you should know about silverfish. Pests, composition, identity, occurrence, and relationship with humans. According to Wikipedia, they are human commensals. However, you don't know how to get rid of silverfish. To be honest, I'm not sure either, as I've never had an issue with silverfish here, so I've never researched this problem online. Apparently, borax and another substance are a home remedy for silverfish. I have no idea. 
Uh, I've never had a reason to get rid of them here because I don't have them. And with that, we end the video about silverfish. I hope I shared some cool knowledge with you and that you'll know a bit more about these strange, secretive insects. That's all from me. Thanks for watching and bye.